I'm Lisa Roulard. I wanted to thank Eastern Washington University and the Get Lit Festival for the invitation this year to read. Um, even if it turns out to be virtually, that's still great. I'm going to read from my own work tonight, and I'm going to start with a poem called Postage Stamps, the First Date Series, Below Train Tracks, Bellingham, Washington. For Ryan. Creosote air, a space size for two. For sunken ships, he tells her, no responsibilities remain. Down trail at the bay, the tide subtracting. Is this a place to bring a girl? Weight thrown grit, tracks and timbers tightly tacked. The dog you can't see, barking. That poem and this next one are from my forthcoming chapbook, which I'll talk about a little bit more at the end of the reading. This poem is titled The Mailman and the Pear Tree. He'd realized only tree, not pears, so it wasn't deep enough in his knee bend to pass under freely, his blue mail shirt like a second sky swinging up to the branches. And the pears, little riddles of women, gold green and etched speckled, announced themselves like stealthy percussion, one fruit plunking in the mouth of the mailbag, pear avion, warm, unnoticed. In the leafy edges of air, the mailman stops, sidesteps, straightens. Each pear, so unlike an envelope, he thinks, as some weight near his street-worn shoes and more above him sway. Yet each arrives sealed and stored with messages, one from each seed's letter, the ripening hope of trees. And sometimes I like to write poems about science, and I chose this next one to read today uh, because it's about hope. It's part of what it's about. It's called Silk Screws. For the scientists, for the silkworms. Slotted and threaded and glowing apple green, these screws were built of silkworm cocoon, the lustrous proteins folded by medical engineers, delicate maneuvering with something so fine they should be honored for the light in their thinking. But before cocoons, the silkworms fed day after day on hand-picked mulberry leaves, their constant munching the sound of heavy rain. Silence then, when it's time to spin. Snug in their white puffs, the silkworms begin to grow up. Like that, pupae. The clean silk waits. Life's work as continuous strand. They are killed then with the hot hiss of steam. No matter that if they'd lived, they'd be flightless. No matter they'd emerge into permanent dark. Domesticated silk moths are blind. The screws are designed like hope to fasten where we're deeply broken, to last as long as needed. Someday, when they're placed in the bones of children's faces, those that are broken but will go on growing, may each anchor be a nightlight perpetually lit, each child alive with the wing pulse of blood, with their own constellation of green silk stars, the great looking upward to carry within. The remaining poems that I'll be reading are newer and they are persona poems in the voice of a fugitive. Fugitive in the burned house. At least the roses, great gulps of pink and the apricot tree glowing, the side yard of iris dried in ruffle, back door a life raft the doorknobs cool water, taste of campfire, two stories choked with corners, at least breath 
at least walls and the fidgeting tasseled grasses where flame fed fled the roof caught at least the soot lit stars fugitive i'm everything i've taken i'm pepper and salt bicycle after bicycle raccoon 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 i'm rolling suitcase can of green beans in the rain, tablecloth, pop rocks, razor blade. I'm wristwatch and water, water and water again. I'm flashlight, then batteries, half a Stephen King paperback. I'm matchbox, an open beer, wing I tore from a bird. I'm soap, I'll sing, sing myself clean. Fugitive, the piano. I've carved keys on this down cedar, and now I play what my fingers remember, my body offering enough loneliness to sing the stream's so stones back together. Fugitive, unmailed letter number 12. Dear, I love the red cedar, how its muscled roots don't snake away, but shoulder hook into grit with a certainty of staying. Are you waiting? I cannot hook, cannot stay. The tree, too, I love. The green upsprawling that glows in sunshine, that in wind shakes rain like a dog. The ruddy trunk mapping time like roads far away, and yours, unwavering. Thank you for listening. Um, if you'd like to support me, um, I'm delighted to announce that my chapbook, An Envelope Waiting, will be published by Finishing Line Press. Um, if you would like to buy a copy, the pre-sale begins on May 25th of 2020. Uh, you can order the book directly from finishinglinepress.com and the book will come out uh, in the fall. Thanks so much.